This is Zach from the Counseling Center, and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about this chart right here, which is called a Yerkes Dodson chart. So what this is, as you can see, is performance on the y-axis coupled with stress on the x-axis and how the two interact to get you to the level of optimal performance. And of course, it's really important to remember that not all stress is bad. So we actually require a little bit of stress to get to the optimal performance that we could have. So you might notice, like for instance, sitting in a kind of boring class, you might feel really bored. Um, and it's, you might also notice that your stress is really low because it's boring and you might feel like you know it. Um, and you can kind of see that on the chart here, boredom is kind of around this low stress and low performance range. Now, as you see the stress go up, you start to notice a little bit more increased attention and interest, which helps us perform. And you might notice that in sports, for instance, the more you're able to pay attention and be aware, the better you do. Now, you continue that up and you see in this zone right here, we get that optimal performance, right? So you have like a moderate level of stress, but you're performing really highly. Now what happens when you go over that optimal performance? You start to slide down and you hit some of this strong anxiety and you see that performance going down. So you might think about studying for that test that's coming up, maybe a final, and you feel yourself getting really worked up and you keep thinking like, oh my gosh, like what happens if I fail? And that actually distracts you from doing as well on studying and processing as you would have otherwise. Now that anxiety continues and keeps getting worse and worse, and you start ending up all the way down here again in that complete meltdown range. So you're seeing extremely high stress to the point where your performance is basically floored out again, just like it was on the other side when there was no stress. But this time, it's because you have so much happening in you that you can't focus on anything. So you're trying to study, but you can't keep your mind on the material your mind is totally out worrying about what might happen next. So kind of try to keep this in mind the next time you're thinking about your stress level and what's going on. And this actually relates really well with this here, which is what we call the stress thermometer. So you'll see down here at the bottom, we see that low level of stress, which correlates with that yerkes stotson curve at the very early part of it. So in the, right before that boredom and maybe even depression type thing, you might be experiencing like sweet dreams, right? So you, even like when you're asleep, your stress level is gonna be pretty low because you're asleep, but you're also not gonna be performing very well if you're asleep. So go up from that, you're smelling the roses, everything's fine, maybe you have a class, you're sitting in it, but it's kind of boring, there's nothing really grabbing your attention, you know you're doing well in it, no stress really, maybe a little bit more than being asleep, but it's not that high of a stressor. Move that up to relaxed and happy. So you're still relaxed, but you're moving up that curve a little bit. You're a little bit more focused. You're feeling good though. And then we get to this four, which is where we kind of start that optimal performance range. And you feel good, you're doing good, you're focused, you're motivated. You move into that five, there's stress happening, but it's good stress. You feel like you can handle it. It's like you got, a, you got an assignment that's gonna be difficult, but you're confident that you know what you're doing. Now, we start to peek over that other side of that optimal performance range where it's starting to head back down the other way. So you're still in that kind of optimal-ish range but you're kind of starting to fall down off of the top of that yerkes Stotson curve. So you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit over your head, but you still think that you can handle it. Now we start moving a little bit further. You're feeling even more stressed. It's getting to that, oh my gosh, like what's going on? Like I'm feeling stressed. What's gonna happen next? What, what am I doing? Just worrying. Eight, you're starting to get into that range where you're just like, losing it, it's hard to focus, you're falling back down the edge of that side of the curve, and now you're getting into nine, which is flipping out, and then 
10, which is basically call 911 because you're so anxious that just nothing positive is going to happen. You're just totally lost in anxiety and there's zero kind of performance happening at that point. Like you just can't function at that level. So yeah, take a little bit, think about this Yerkes-Dodson curve and see how you've noticed it apply to you.